Seven cosmic wanderers are now racing toward the inner solar system, and by late 2025, all of them will arrive within just half a year. NASA and leading observatories confirm this is no ordinary lineup, something this clustered has never been recorded by Pan Stars, Atlas, or any other global sky survey. Among these icy visitors is a true anomaly. Comet 3, Atlas, only the third interstellar comet ever detected. Unlike the usual long-period comets that return after thousands of years, this one is a drifter from outside our solar system, carrying chemistry never before seen. Its emerald green coma is already puzzling scientists and could rewrite what we know about how comets form beyond our neighborhood. Statistically, the odds of this many comets appearing together in one season are vanishingly small, less than half a percent per decade. For astronomers, the question is no longer just how rare is this, but why now? Behind the scenes, the world's robotic comet hunters are working overtime. Perched on mountaintops in Hawaii, Chile and South Africa, these telescopes scan the skies every night with precision no human eye could match. Their cameras can detect light as faint as 21st magnitude, about a million times dimmer than the faintest star we can see without a telescope. Every clear night, millions of stars and galaxies fill their frames. But the real prize is motion. A single pixel drifting ever so slightly across images triggers alarms that ripple through the astronomical community. Within minutes, telescopes across the globe scramble to confirm whether it's just a rock, an asteroid, or something far more exciting. A comet. This network of digital eyes has revolutionized discovery. Just two decades ago, finding a comet required years of patience and a dose of luck. Now NASA's Minor Planet Center catalogs hundreds of new icy bodies every year. But even with this powerful system, no one expected a traffic jam of seven bright comets crammed into one short window. Already astronomers admit the incoming flood of data is testing the limits of their detection pipeline. It's not just software running the show anymore. Human operators are glued to the screens, anxiously watching alerts pop faster than they can clear them. For sky watchers, this convergence means opportunity. A comet's closest approach to the sun, its perihelion, is the moment it transforms from a faint icy speck into a dazzling display of glowing gas and dust. The closer the perihelion to Earth, the brighter and more spectacular the view. Brightness is measured on the magnitude scale, where lower numbers mean more brilliance. For reference, the faintest stars visible without binoculars are about magnitude 6 while the brightest comets of history have rivaled Venus at magnitude. Some of 2025's visitors are projected to reach naked eye visibility, possibly even outshining the brightest stars. Each comet will grow tails as it heats up, one of dust, a pale streamer pushed outward by sunlight, and one of ionized gas, glowing blue as it's whipped by the solar wind. On rare occasions powerful solar storms can slice these iron tails away, only for them to regrow within hours. With seven comets in play, scientists expect to witness multiple of these tail-stripping events live, giving us front-row seats to solar wind interactions on a cosmic scale. For context, in an ordinary six-month stretch, we're lucky to get two or three comets bright enough to glimpse with a backyard telescope. Most remain faint, logged only in digital archive, but simulations now show that late 2025 is anything but ordinary. Seven major comets packed into one half year is so improbable that researchers are already revisiting models of how comet populations behave. Something unusual is unfolding, and for the first time in history, humanity has the technology to watch it all in real time. Statistically, seven comets crowding into a single half year is an outlier of the highest order. When scientists run simulations using NASA and ESA survey data, the models usually predict just two or three bright comets in a six-month stretch. The chance of seven is less than half a percent, with some calculations putting it closer to a one in a thousand year of... This isn't just about improved telescopes or smarter software. Bright comets are dictated by gravitational nudges, orbital dynamics, and raw chance. Finding faint ones is easy with modern surveys, but assembling a pack of seven major players is something nature rarely deals. For astronomers it feels like hitting the cosmic jackpot. Among these seven visitors, not every comet will dazzle casual stargazers. Two of them, CI 222 Pan Stars and 2040 P Neat, are faint by design. Pan Stars will reach its closest approach on July 31st, looping past the Sun at about 3.8 AU, nearly four times farther out than Earth. At that distance, sunlight barely activates its icy surface, leaving it visible only through large telescopes. Later in the year, on December 19th, 240p centit passes at 2.1 AU. 
this comet is a known returner, and like its previous visits, it won't produce much more than a ghostly smudge in sensitive detectors. While too dim for most backyard observers, these quiet comets are still valuable. Amateur astronomers equipped with advanced cameras will track them carefully, adding crucial data to the minor planet center's growing comet archives. They may not make headlines but they complete the picture of 2025's unusual cluster. The real excitement builds with the next wave. Three of the comets, Swan, C Evan 2025R2, Atlas K1, and Lemon C Evan 2025A6, are shaping up to be showstoppers. Swan will pass just 0.25 AU from Earth on October 21st, about 37 million kilometers. That's close enough for the solar wind to sculpt a spectacular tail, and brightness forecasts suggest it could reach magnitude 2 or 3 visible to the naked eye at dawn. Only days earlier, Atlas K1 will make its plunge, sweeping inside Mercury's orbit at just 0.33 AU from the Sun. At that proximity, it will be bombarded with solar radiation, likely triggering dramatic jets and unpredictable outbursts that photographers dream of capturing. Then, on November 8th, Lemon will swing by at just over 0.5 AU, with projections placing it around magnitude 3.5 to 4. It should glow at dusk in the northern hemisphere, easily visible with binoculars and possibly without them under dark skies. Each of these three carries its own unique character, Swan with its close pass, Atlas K1 with its solar fireworks, and Lemon with its steady evening glow. But not all comets of 2025 are meant for backyard stargazing. 14114P Tarnan Stereo will slip so close to the sun's glare that ground-based telescopes won't catch it at all. On September 27th, it will dive to just over 0.5 AU from the sun, well within Venus's orbit. From Earth's perspective, it vanishes into daylight. That's where spacecraft like NASA's O and the twin stereo probes step in. Built to monitor solar storms, their coronagraph cameras regularly capture comets as bright streaks against the solar corona. These instruments provide a unique laboratory, showing activity and tail structure invisible from the ground. NASA and ESA teams are already planning which spacecraft will target which comet, juggling observation windows as October becomes one of the busiest months for solar system science in decades. Atlas K1 is already shaping up to be one of the wild cards of its close brush with the sun is expected to trigger dramatic tail activity, jets of dust and gas fanning out in unpredictable bursts. But if Atlas K1 is the showman, then 3i Atlas, the interstellar visitor, is the enigma. Unlike the other six, this one doesn't belong here at all. Its path isn't an ellipse like regular comets, it's hyperbolic, meaning it came from interstellar space and will never return. For astronomers, this is a once-in-a-lifetime laboratory. The last interstellar comets we saw, Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019, redefined how we think about the building blocks of planets. Now 3i Atlas offers a rare chance to measure alien chemistry, as it flares to life near the sun. The challenge is, no single observatory can track all of these visitors at once. Spacecraft like Ohen Stereo have narrow fields of view, while ground-based telescopes can only cover patches of the sky each night. Scientists must make tough calls. Do they chase Swan and Atlas K1 as they dance with solar storms or lock in on 3i Atlas, the interstellar mystery? Luckily 2025 will see a coordinated effort like never before. NASA, ESA and observatories worldwide are already mapping out schedules to make sure every comet is documented. Together spacecraft coronagraphs and Earth-based images will capture events in real time like the instant a solar eruption severs a comet's iron tail. From July through December, the sky becomes a conveyor belt of comets. First comes Pan Stars' late July, faint and distant, barely a whisper. By September Swan is moving in close, while 4114P stereo sweeps too near the sun for Earth to follow, leaving space telescopes to catch the action. October then explodes with activity. Atlas K1 dives inside Mercury's orbit, throwing off plumes of gas while days later 3i Atlas streaks past Mars, its coma swelling to hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Lemon follows in November with a classic evening display, glowing bright enough for binoculars. Finally December closes with 200T, a quiet farewell act. Stacked together these perihelion dates look less like coincidence and more like choreography, a cosmic lineup where every performer takes the stage in rapid succession. This compressed schedule brings something unique, over, for the first time, Astronomers may catch multiple bright comets in the same frame, tails sweeping across the night sky together. Data pipelines will be overwhelmed, 
observatories will run on tight rotations and sky watchers will find themselves double checking which comet they're pointing at. In a way the real challenge of 2025 isn't spotting comets, it's keeping them straight. And the tails are where the story gets truly dramatic. Dust tails, broad and golden, curve gently along a comet's path. They're made of microscopic grains pushed away by sunlight, scattering light back to Earth like cosmic fog. Ion tails, on the other hand, are thin, straight, and vividly blue formed when solar ultraviolet light rips electrons from gas molecules and the solar wind sweeps them outward like a cosmic blade. These two tails tell two very different stories, one about the warmth of sunlight, the other about the invisible power of space weather. But these elegant forms don't always survive. When a coronal mass ejection, a massive burst of plasma and magnetic field from the sun, slams into a comet, the ion tail can be severed instantly. In April 2007, NASA's Stereo spacecraft caught this happening to Comet N. One moment, its ion tail stretched for millions of kilometers, the next it was sliced clean off, drifting in space as the comet immediately began growing a new one. Scientists call this magnetic reconnection, a sudden rearrangement of the sun's magnetic field that violently rips ions away. In 2025, with so many comets on stage, we may not just read about this phenomenon in textbooks, we may see it unfold in real time. For a brief window, a comet stripped of its glowing tail becomes a living diagram of the sun's invisible influence. This isn't just pretty sky scenery, it's a real-time broadcast of space weather. In late 2025, with seven bright comets clustered along the ecliptic plane, scientists know the odds of witnessing tail disconnections are higher than ever. Each solar storm, or coronal mass ejection, that sweeps across this orbital highway, could slice through a comet's ion tail producing sudden kinks, ghostly wisps, or even a complete break. For both professionals and backyard skywatchers, these moments are a front row seat to the sun's magnetic reach, written in streaks of blue and green, across the dawn sky. Statistical models back this up. Normally a comet passing close to the sun has maybe a 1 in 5 chance of losing its tail during peak activity, but with 7 comets bunched along similar paths in 2025, those odds multiply, raising the possibility of several disconnection events within weeks of each other. NASA heliophysicists compare it to rolling loaded dice. The geometry almost guarantees that at least a few comets will be caught in the blast zone. Among them, the most extraordinary is 3i Iotlus, the third confirmed interstellar object ever observed after Oumuamua and Boris Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope, have both captured its enormous coma, an atmosphere of gas and dust nearly 700,000 kilometers across, making it larger than half the sun's diameter, and more than 50 times the width of Jupiter. Inside this vast sphere sits a nucleus just a few kilometers wide, like a pebble hidden inside a storm cloud that could swallow planets whole. What's even more astonishing is its behavior. Observations published by NASA and reported by FIORG show dust erupting from the surface at rates of 6 to 60 kilograms per second, the equivalent of tossing out several bowling balls of material every heartbeat. These outbursts sculpt ever-changing fans and streamers, some stretching hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Teams using Gemini South and Palomar Observatory Describe it as a breathing comet, reshaping itself hour by hour, as sunlight rotates across its surface. But the real shocker came from spectroscopy. NASA's JWST revealed that 3i Iotlus doesn't behave like any comet we've studied before. Instead of water vapor leading the show, its coma is dominated by carbon dioxide, at an unprecedented ratio of about 8 molecules of CO2 for every one of H. Was this comet forged in a frozen zone far from its parent star, where carbon dioxide could condense in bulk? Or does it hide water ice beneath an insulating crust, waiting for a closer approach to a... Planetary scientists are still debating, but one thing is clear, this interstellar visitor is rewriting the rules. Every spectrum, every image, is giving us a glimpse into chemistry shaped in another star system, billions of years and light years away. And with its path threading through the inner solar system alongside six other comets, 2025 is shaping up to be one of the most revealing comet seasons in history. If 3i Iotlus really is spewing out carbon dioxide rich dust, it means the material drifting behind it could be unlike anything Earth has ever encountered. And here's where it gets even more exciting. Orbital simulations from NASA and ESA suggest that by mid-2020, this comet's dust trail may actually cross Earth's orbit. If that happens, we could see a brand new meteor shower. Tiny fragments of an alien world burning up in our skies. 
Research teams are already preparing radar networks and high-altitude aircraft to try and capture even a single particle. Imagine holding in a lab the first dust grain forged around another star, a sample older and stranger than anything from our own solar system. That's the level of science we're talking about. Meanwhile, headlines and social media will no doubt spin the story toward fear. In fact, rumors are already building as 2025 approaches, posts claiming that this comet cluster will cause earthquakes, magnetic flips, or worse. But the numbers are clear. Every comet in this lineup has had its path mapped and remapped with the largest telescopes and NASA's Minor Planet Center data. The closest pass by Comet Swan still keeps it 37 million kilometers away, over 90 times the Earth-Moon distance. That's not just safe, it's practically routine. NASA, ESA, and independent astronomers have double-checked the orbits and published peer-reviewed studies confirming there is zero collision risk. So what does this mean for us on the ground? It means we get a sky show, not a threat. And the schedule is already marked. On October 21, 2025, just before sunrise, Comet Swan makes its closest approach. Under dark skies, no telescope is needed. It could shine nearly as bright as the stars in Orion, with a long delicate tail stretching across the east. Then a few weeks later, between November 6 and 12, Comet Lemon takes center stage, after sunset, in the western sky. This is the one for evening watchers. Lemon might reach magnitude 4 or brighter, easily visible to the naked eye under rural skies and striking with binoculars in city setting. For anyone hoping to see them, preparation is simple, find an open view of the horizon, bring binoculars if you have them, and give your eyes time to adapt. Telescopes will reveal even more, the fuzzy glow of the coma, faint jets, and subtle tints of color. But the truth is, all you really need is the willingness to step outside and look up. Astronomers stress just how unusual this is. In over a century of careful sky surveys, we've never seen this many sizable comets arrive in such a short span. Current population models can't fully explain it. The best guess is that it's part coincidence, part the result of today's powerful surveys spotting objects earlier than ever before. But whatever the cause, 2025 and 2026 will be remembered as a comet season, like no other, one that doesn't just light up the skies, but rewrites what we know about how comets move, fragment, and interact with the solar system.